Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. Wants to go to heaven. Who wants to wear that robe and a crown? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, it's raining a while ago, but rain cannot stop us from glorifying and praising God. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, amen. Hallelujah. You know, <clears throat> one of the privilege of uh, being a Christian, you know, is having people come up to you and uh, asking you for prayers, asking you for advices, you know, uh, about many things, about their marriage, about family issues, about work-related, and uh, sometimes mental issues. You know, back home, during the pandemic, the onslaught of the pandemic, I have so many friends. Even those that I've never met before, they've been messaging me, texting me, asking for prayers, asking for advices, because, you know, you know how it was during the onslaught of the pandemic in the year 2020, 2021. You know, it's really hard for everybody, you know. And there are times when people approach you asking you how to change their lives. They want to be converted, you know. They want to become like you. And <clears throat> because they see us, they see you, they see your lives. They see our lives openly as we preach the gospel, as we try to live our faith as faithfully as we can. So they come to you. <clears throat> now, not many Christians, you know, have that privilege of being approached to for prayers, for advices, and being told of something that is too personal. You know, being entrusted, you know, with personal uh, information about their lives, about their relationship, and what they are going through. It's a privilege, actually. And for me, it's a uh, wonderful privilege to have this so-called Christianity in us, that to be a part of their lives, to be praying for them. You know? And <clears throat> for the past months, uh, let me share with you, for the past months, we have been again approached by so many people having problems in their lives, needed prayers, in dire need of love, in dire need of hugs, in dire need of hope, in dire need of forgiveness from our Lord. Now, you know, left and right, front and back, people are dying. People are developing again anxieties. People are fearful of their lives because of health issues. They are in panic mode again. You know, thinking properly it becomes so difficult for them. Sometimes breathing itself becomes difficult. They don't know what to do. That's why they turn to you, Christians, men and women of the Lord. Now, this is where our learnings comes in. This is where your deep relationship to Christ comes in as a servant living a Christ-centered life life this is where how you live your life matters the most as the world they look at you they look into you and see in you an unshaken individuals who seems like you know life is so good no matter what amen is life so good life's good life is good because god is good and God is good all the time. Yeah. You know, they look at you and they see in you that you are so at peace even in your difficult times. And as they compare their life with yours, they will see that there is something wrong with them. Something they are not doing right and something you are doing right. Something they are missing. When they look at you, they compare their life to you, and they will think, something is missing with me. 
Now, what do you have that they don't have? And soon they will wonder, what is it that's making the difference between you and them? And pretty soon, the difference will become obvious. You know, as Christians that we are, we set ourselves apart from the world, how it behaves and how it operates. It must be clear to the world, visible as it can possibly be, that our lives are worth emulating and it is worth living. Now, the worldly people, they have lost directions. Totally, they have lost directions in their life. They are stressed out. They are frightened of tomorrow. And they are in strife. But you are not. You are different. And you must be different. Now, this is where the difference is. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, fear, it is a natural response. It is part of our emotions. But to really fear losing your life when you are in Christ Jesus, you know, you must do some reckoning with your life. If you fear of dying, if you're afraid to die, even if you have Jesus Christ in your life and you are living a Christ-centered life, then you must do some reckoning. Being with God, you know, it is our ultimate goal, just like the song that we sang a while ago. Again, let me ask you, who wants to go to heaven? Raise your hand. Who wants to go to heaven? Now you know my second question will be, who wants to go first? You know, that is our ultimate goal, to go to heaven. So why are you afraid? Right? Now, because we have God, He gave us that hope, and He fills us with all joy and peace. Even there be sufferings in our life. We have challenges. You and I, we have challenges. We face difficulties. We cry. We get hurt. It's because we're all humans, right? And have these emotions and feelings. But despite of it all, we have peace. Despite of it all, you have joy. Despite of it all, you have hope. The world now sees what is the obvious reason, what makes all the difference. And our lesson for today, Jesus makes all the difference. Amen. He makes all the difference. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, let me read to you again our scripture reading. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength. We must thank the Lord every day for giving us strength in our lives. That he considered me trustworthy. Rejoice because God called you. He considered you to be trustworthy. Appointing me to his service. Be glad because you are God's servant. Remember, we talk about being a bad servant. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor, in a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus, might display his immense patience as an example for those who believe in him and receive eternal life. Now the king, to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now Paul, in his letter to Timothy, he tells Timothy of his status before Jesus shows him. Before Jesus chose him to become a servant, a vessel to carry the gospel in his life, he told Timothy that he's a blasphemer. 
He told Timothy that he is a persecutor. He told Timothy that he is a violent man. He told Timothy that he acted in ignorance. But all of this, look at what Jesus did. He was shown mercy instead of vengeance. Grace was poured out upon him instead of wrath. And he told Timothy that he was worst of sinners. I considered myself worst of sinners. But Jesus saved him. Jesus saved me. You know, you see, for Apostle Paul, Jesus made all the difference in his life. Luke 8, 39. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Now, this person mentioned here for a time, had, he had demons in him. And Jesus healed him. Jesus told him to go to his family, to go home, to go to his family. But as he went, in his joy, he proclaimed what Jesus had done for him in the whole city. You can probably feel the joy in this person because he was healed. And Jesus made the difference for him. In Matthew chapter 9, 27 to 31, two blind men, they received their sight because of their faith with Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus told them not to tell anybody, not to tell anyone, but because of such a wonderful blessing from, from Jesus Christ, the, flow, the overflowing of emotions and happiness, they proclaimed the name of Jesus because Jesus made the difference for them. In 1 Timothy, again, chapter 1, in verse 16, as you can read, it was clear to Brother Paul that his life was to be used. His life was to be used by God to display God's patience to everyone who would believe in him. You know, Paul's life was an example that forgiveness is available to all, even how grave you think you are. Even how grave you think your sins are. You see, he, he, he told Timothy that he's the worst of sinners. But Christ forgave him. He was used by our Lord Jesus Christ. A testimony that there's really hope for all. <clears throat> As Jesus makes all the difference, we have hope. Instead of uncertainty, Jesus makes the difference. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand His slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but to everyone to come to repentance. Now, take note of this, my brethren and friends. You know, God is patiently waiting for you. For those who have not yet accepted who have not yet accepted God's invitation for repentance and submission to Him, you know, this message is very clear. That He is waiting for you because He does not want you to perish for all eternity. Now, so goes through to those who have accepted the Lord, but drifting away from Him. He is waiting for you to come back. He is waiting for you to come back. God is making clear that He is presenting a kind of hope that will not make you uncertain and fearful of tomorrow. You know, people are afraid of the thought of death because number one, they are not ready. Number two, because they are uncertain if there is really heaven or hell. Number three, they are afraid of death because they are uncertain if they will go to heaven or hell. And number four, if they are certain that they will go to heaven, they're reasoning. They're reasoning why they think they will go to heaven is uncertain. So that is why some people or many people are afraid of dying. 
First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant and boundless mercy has caused us to be born again to an ever-living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, we must be grateful. We must gratefully praise God and adore God and Jesus Christ for which they have given us a living hope, not a dead end, not which that is uncertain, but one that you can proudly wait upon that is bound to happen because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And how can you be sure of that hope? How can you be sure that you have that hope? In Romans chapter 6, 3 and 4, it's very clear in this passage that when we join Jesus in His kind of death through baptism, we will certainly live with Him just as He was raised, resurrected. It's talking about resurrection. Jesus being resurrected from the dead. Now, if you have this hope in you, this certainty, you will still be fearful. Will you still be fearful of tomorrow? Will you still be uncertain of tomorrow? Of course not. That's why we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. As Christians that we all are men and women of God, we must reflect in us that though we are wasting away, as the Bible puts it, our body becomes frail, weak, and fragile, we are not disheartened. We knew that because of Jesus Christ, our inner self is being renewed daily. Your life will be a living testimony to others that we do not need to be frightened of what tomorrow may bring because we rejoice in hope. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And Jesus made all the difference. Now second, faith instead of fear. Jesus makes the difference. You know, faith and fear, they cannot exist together. You know, why? Because the fear that I am talking about here is our unbelief. It's our little belief, as they say. Our weak belief in the Almighty. Now, remember that the example of Apostle Peter, when he tried to walk on water, Remember that story in the Bible? And suddenly he felt the wind and saw these big waves coming to him. And he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out to Jesus. Remember that story? He cried out to Jesus, Jesus, save me. Okay. Then he, Jesus immediately reached out to him, grabbed hold of his hand, saved him. And Jesus told Peter, you of little faith. You can read that in Matthew chapter 14. And again, in Matthew chapter 8, another classic example. Another classic example of immature faith and belief to Jesus Christ. You know, why we are afraid? Because we do not have faith in God. Okay? Now, they knew who Jesus is. They were on the boat. They knew who Jesus is what he is capable of doing. And yet, because of these enormous storms in front of them, they cried, Whoa. They woke up Jesus. Okay? They woke up Jesus. And Jesus said, You of little faith. You of little faith. I of little faith. Why am I afraid? Let me tell you. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of dying? Are you afraid that something might happen bad? Something bad might happen to you. Don't be afraid. You have Jesus Christ in your life. That is why I said faith and fear cannot exist together. They cannot, they do not belong in the same page. Faith, on the other hand, 
is defined in Hebrews chapter 11, you know, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Because of faith, we see the triune God as real and alive through the eyes of our faith. We know that God, even though we cannot see Him, that He is present. He is present and He is working in you and through you, through our lives, in our lives. And that is what faith does. That is what your faith do to you. Now, King David, he experienced fear in his life. Oh, yes. He experienced fear in his lifetime. Make no mistake about it. But he did not let that fear envelop him. Instead, he calmly bring it to God. When he said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in the Lord. If you are afraid, put your trust in the Lord. When you are facing a giant of difficulties in your life, remember that you have a bigger God. You have a bigger God. You have a greater God. Make your faith bigger than your fear. You have to compose yourself and go to God in His words. And His words says that the Lord says, I will make you wise. I will make you wise and show you where to go. I will guide you. I will guide you and watch over you. You know, God will give you wisdom. He will give you wisdom on how to live your life, how to go about your life day in and day out, you know, including when you are faced with surmounting difficulties. Even when you are faced with the giant of problems in front of you. You know, God will be your instructor. I will guide you. I will watch you and show you where to go. He will be your instructor, guiding you all the way, watching over you, watching closely. Now, think of it when you are trying or when your son, when your daughter are trying to learn how to ride a bicycle. You know, when you are trying to ride the bicycle, your mom and your dad, they are, they are holding the bike for you. They are holding you so that you will not fall. And when you start to learn how to ride the bike by yourself, you know, they will be close by. Your parents will be close by. And when you start to sway and you start to fall, you start running after them, right? You go to them. Stop, stop, stop. And that will be God for you. That is God will be doing to you. If you allow God, if you allow Jesus Christ to live in you, to give your faith totally to Him, to give your trust totally to Him, He will be more than like your mom and your dad. In Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 5, Romans 5, 3 to 5, not only that we, uh, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. No doubt we will have sufferings in this life. No doubt. See? You will suffer. You will have pain in your lifetime. You know, probably your problem probably is bigger than your non-Christian friends. Probably they are more heavier than non-Christians. But the difference is, even though ours are bigger and heavier than them, we know that our faith in our God is so much bigger than our problem. Nothing will be bigger than our God. Now, the world must see in us how we are so different from them. And that in the midst of these tribulations, in the midst of your difficulties, they will wonder, why in the world are we rejoicing? And we will tell them plainly that these tribulations produces in us patient 
endurance. We will not complain against God. We will not be angry against God. We will not rebel against God. We will not turn our backs from God as we await joyfully and patiently for our glory in heaven. That is why in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, be patient in tribulation because Jesus made all the difference. Lastly, pray instead of panic. Jesus will make the difference. You see, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. The prophet Daniel knew what was going on. He knew that all of King Darius' official connived with each other against him. And he knew that his life is at risk. You know, but look at this. Instead of him in panic mode, he went home, walked casually into his room, got down on his knees, through that window, looking up to heaven, he prayed to God. He is not in panic mode. But if that happens to you and I, oh, we'll go running away. I will go running away. I will be out of the city, hiding. Why? Hey, it's them against me. It's like you against the world. I will be out of here. See? Or better yet, get out of the country. Go to a non-extradition country. Right? But Daniel, no. No. It's like, it's just like walking in the park. Casually went home, walked into his room, kneeled down and prayed to God. Now, next thing you know, he was in the lion's den. How cool was that? <laughs> After praying to God, now you find yourself inside the lion's den. Wow. He was sentenced to die for violating the king's law. If I will show this photo to a, to a child, definitely that child will tell me, that's Daniel in the lion's den. You know, no doubt. This is one of the most beloved stories in the Bible. Daniel in the lion's den. You know, you know people depicted Daniel praying, looking up to God, with all the lions surrounding him. Now, Daniel was not in panic mode. He was not shouting, you know, hey, get me out of here. When they shut the door, he was not shouting at them. Please, he was not begging for his life. No. And he was not shouting at God, Lord, save me. No, he was not shouting. He was praying to God. You know, that's why many pictured him praying to God. He was not looking at the lion, but he was focused on God for deliverance. You see, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends, those who are watching us in Zoom, if you are facing difficulties, if you are facing problems, don't face it. Instead, look up to God. Just like Daniel. He was not looking at the lions. He was looking to God. And an angel came down, rescued him, and shut the mouth of the lion. Apostle Paul reminds us, do not be anxious about anything. Now, everybody, please, everybody, can you read that portion? Do not be anxious about anything. Can you read? Everybody, please. Okay. 
All right. Thank you very much. It says that do not be anxious about anything. Do we get the message of that simple few words? But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You know, this is a wonderful promise of God to hold on to. If you are truly faithful, you will live this verse day in and day out. Whatever is in your hearts, may it be a request for something that you need for in your daily lives or something that is bothering you. You say you have health issues. You bring it to God. You talk to God in prayer. Get down on your knees and pray to God. You talk to God. And this wonderful promise is His peace will be upon you and He will guard your heart and mind. Now, you must reflect. You must reflect in your life as Christians that no matter how chaotic this world is and how evil people might be to you, you are still unshaken. Now let the world wonder what in the world that you have that they do not have. In Romans 12:12, 12, 12, be constant in prayer. Because Jesus made all the difference. If you truly believe that you are living a Christ-centered life, you will show to the world through your life what's the difference between you and them. Make them wonder what in the world is with you that they are missing. Why in the world that in the midst of troubles you are smiling. You are happy. You are rejoicing. Apostle Paul summed up his newfound relationship and faith in Jesus when he clearly said, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because Jesus made all the difference. Now, brethren and friends, the lesson is yours. I encourage those who have not yet accepted the Lord, you know, be one of His true servants. Be sure of your life in heaven. You know, between heaven and hell, Jesus makes the difference. And shall we all stand up as we sing the song of invitation? Good morning and God bless us all.